What's up guys, it's Dari here and welcome back to a brand new video about how to use Bouncer.js for form validation. I recently came across Bouncer.js, it's created by Freddy Nandi and you can see it as a lightweight framework that allows you to give users feedback before clicking on the submit button. So think about a contact form. Whenever a user clicks on the submit button, the page will automatically refresh. And based on the user input, a user will receive feedback if the form is submitted or not. Now in order to prevent the page refresh, we could use Bouncer.js, which will allow us to give users immediate feedback when they leave the input field. Now before we continue on, please make sure that you are subscribed to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button down below, so you don't miss out on any content. Now let's hop to our code editor. You could use whatever you want, it really doesn't matter. But for this video, I'm using Visual Studio Code. Now obviously, we need some kind of form before we could continue on. And what I want to do is to create a context form first. So right inside our index.html, let's write down doc and hit tab. Let me zoom in a little bit. And I actually want to go to Google Fonts to download or to use a font. So let's open a new tab. Let's go to fonts.google.com. Let's click on Open Sense. And while well, you can choose a couple, I will just go for light regular and well let's say bold so let's click on embed let's copy the ring href let's go back to our code editor and place it right below our title let me align this all right let's also create another link where we will require let's also create another link where we will require our style sheet so let's say style.css and I know that we don't have it right now, but we will create it in a second. I will not focus on the back end of the contact form, but just on the front end. I will leave a link in the description if you want to learn how to submit a form. Now, the first thing that I want to do is to create a class inside my body, obviously, of hashtag contact dash form. Let's hit tab. Let's hit enter. Inside my form, I want to create a header of h1 and i want the text of contact space form below our h1 let's create a form we don't need the action so let's get rid of it for now so let's create a label first for the name inside the label let's give it a text of name outside of our label let's create an input with a type which is equal to text and the name is equal to name and we also need to add a new attribute called required. Now what we could do is to basically, well, copy paste our label and input, go in the line below, paste it one more time. Now let's change the label for name to email, the text to email as well. The input type is also email and the name is also email. Well, we need it two more times. So let's copy paste it two more times. The third one is for phone, so our phone number. So let's change name to phone number. The type is equal to tell, and the name is phone. And for the last one, let's change the label for name to message. The text is message. The input is text, the name is message. And this one is also required. We also need a button to submit it. So let's create a button where the type is equal to submit and the name is equal to submit as well. Let's add a text of submit. Let's save it and let's click on go live. And well, you can see that our form doesn't look good. So what I want to do is to style it. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code and let's open a new file. Let's save it. Let's call it style.css. And let's start styling our page. Now for our HTML comma body, I want to set the margin to zero and the padding to zero as well. But I want to set the width to 100% and the height to 100% as well. If we go back to our Google Chrome, you can see that we have a font family right below our link. So let's copy it. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's paste it right there. And we also need to add a background color. 
let's say the color is F2, F2, F2. For our H1, I want to set the font size to 36 pixels. I want the text to be uppercase. So the text transform is uppercase. I have a padding of 40 pixels top, bottom, zero, left, right, because I want to create a little bit more spacing between the text and the label. So let me show it to you. All right, this makes sense because I want a little bit more space. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code and let's set the margin equal to zero. Now for the div that is wrapped around our context form, which is called contact-form, I want to set the position to absolute because I want the left to be 50% and I want the top to be 40% since I want to place my contact form right in the center. If we save it and go back to Safari, you can see that the placement of our form isn't right. So in order to fix that, we basically need to set our transform equal to translate minus 50% comma minus 50%. And let's set the width to 300 pixels. Save it. Let's hop back to Safari. And you can see that our form is placed right in the center. But the problem that we have right now is that our label and input are aligned next to each other. So they're in line. So let's set that to block. So let's go back. Let's set the label comma input equal to display block. Save it. Go back to Safari. And this looks way better. I also want to add a little bit custom styling to label and input. So what I want to do is to set the label equal to font weight of bold, the font size 12 pixels, text transform is uppercase, and the padding is, well, let's set it to zero first, save it, go back to Safari, and you can see that my label was, well, aligned right to the input. So what I want to do is to set it to zero pixel, zero pixel, six pixel bottom, and zero, and this looks a little bit better. I also want to add a little bit more custom styling to the input, where I want to set the width to 280 pixels. The height is 30 pixels. I want a little bit more margin outside the element. So let's say margin zero pixels, zero pixels, 20 pixels, zero. Let's set the background color to F5, F5, F5. And I want a border of one pixel solid D9, D9, D9. Save it. Let's go to Safari. And this looks way better. The last styling that we need to add is for our button. So let's say that our button has a width of 280 pixels. The height is 40 pixels. The text transform is uppercase as well. The font weight is bold. The background color is green because it's a submit button, 00FF00. The border is one pixel solid, 00FF00. I want a back shadow, 0 pixel, 0 pixel, 10, 00. Color of 00FF00. Font size is 18 pixels, and the margin is 40 pixels, 0, 0, 0. Save it. Hop back to Safari, and this is what we need. Let's actually open a new tab, and let's go to Google. And what I basically want to do right here is search for Bouncer.js. Right here, you can see a GitHub repository, which will appear first, so let's click on it. Well, I'm not the maker of Bouncer.js, so I need to give credit to C. Fernandi. And in my opinion, he actually created an awesome feature. And besides that, he also added documentation on how we could use it. So let's scroll down to point number one. And right here, you can see how we could include Bouncer on our website. There are three ways how we could do it. We can download it, we can use CDN, and we can use NPM. On this channel, I haven't focused on NPM yet, but it is very easy, and I want to do it in the near future. So right now, I want to focus on CDN, which is the basic way how we used to do it. So let's copy the script tags. Let's hop back to Visual Studio Code. 
and inside our index.html, let's place it right below our style sheet. Let's align it a little bit. We don't need the comments, so let's get rid of that. Now let's continue on. What do we need to do next? We basically need to add browser native form validation, which we have already done. We need to initialize bouncer, which we will do in a second. And you could also use special input types such as age, numbers, dates, times, months, and colors, a minimum and a maximum value, the minimum and maximum length. And you can create your custom validation pattern, which I will show you in a second. The next thing that I want to do is to add styling. So let's copy our error message styling. Let's go to our style sheet and paste it right below our button. Let's save it. Let's hop back to Safari. And let's see what we do need to do next. Do we need anything for our error types? Well, actually not, but it's good to go through them. There are four possible ways how we could get error messages. The first one is if the value is missing. So we have set our required attributes on. So if we do not fill in anything, we will get an error message. We have a pattern mismatch. We have an out of range. And if the length of the amount or characters is wrong, we could also send out an error message. Now we could use the error message of Bouncer.js that Fernandi provided for us. But whenever I work with it, I like to use my own error messages. Before I continue on, there are lots of ways how you could adjust, change, use, or install Bouncer.js. This is just the way how I like to use it. So if you like to use another way, that's fine. I try to explain it in the easiest way in this video. What we could do is to scroll down to the options and settings. And right here, we could basically copy everything that's inside our form or I mean our new, new Bouncer instantiation. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's go back to index.html. And I will paste it right below my body tag for now. But you could also use it in a new JavaScript.js file. So let's paste it right here. Save it. Well, let's actually go back to the top and see what we have actually copy pasted. We're basically instantiating a new Bouncer object out of the script tags that we have in our head tag. The prefixes or classes are, well, not necessary right now, but the patterns actually are. You can see that we have an email pattern, URL, number, color, date, time, and month pattern, and you can actually adjust them the way you like to use it. You could also add a new pattern by basically saying, well, email, comma, let's say the name, and you can add your own pattern of, well, only characters but I won't do it for now. Let's just use what Bouncer.js have provided for us. So we have our email, URL, number, color, date, time, and month. Our message after field is true. And well, let's see what it does. If it's true, it will display the error message below the field. And if it's false, it will display it above. Well, the way I like to work is whenever I see an error, I want it to be below my input field so I know which mistake I have made. We have a message custom, so the data bouncer message, which is basically the attribute to use for customer error messages. And we have a message target, which basically is the data attribute to pass in a custom selector for a field error location, which we will not use right now. So let's continue on. What do we have? We have error messages by error type. So if we scroll up, you can see that our input has a type. We have a tell for our phone number, we have text, we have email, and so on. And based on the type, we could print out an error message. So if we go back to our Safari, let's click on the type of text that we have. Right now, we have an opportunity to write. And let's say my name is Dari. So we have entered something in the input field. So we're not getting back an error message. So let's get rid of it and let's click on the screen. And you can see that instantly, a please fill out field has been entered on the screen. 
Let's do the same thing for the email. Let's click on it. Let's well write down an email. But you can see that we do not have a valid email address. So let's say at gmail.com and our error message is gone. But if we get rid of our email, you can see that we do need to fill out our field. And for the phone number, is the exact same thing. And this is pretty cool to give users feed forward. So they don't basically need to, well, submit the form, refresh the page, wait for the error messages and continue on. So let's see what we have. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. We have a pattern mismatch. Well, that's actually what I just showed you with the email, that the email address isn't valid. We have error messages out of range and we can adjust them to whatever we want. So let's say that the pattern mismatch for the email. Please enter a valid email address with a at sign. Save it, hop back to Safari, refresh it, click on email, let's write down anything. And you can see that our error message has changed to please enter a valid email address with an at sign. There is one more way how we could do this. Let's hop back to Visual Studio Code. Let's get rid of the with a at sign. Save it, let's go up, and let's copy our data bouncer message. Let's scroll back to our, well, let's go back to our input type name. Let's align them for a second on the line below. And right above required, let's paste our data bouncer message, and let's set it equal to enter a real name. Save it, hop back to Safari, refresh it let's click on name let's click on the screen again and you can see that well the default message that we had has been overridden by the custom message that we have added inside our input field the last thing that i want to show you is on safari as well let's say that we have an email we have a phone number and we have a message let's try to submit it you can see that we're not allowed to submit the form because our name is empty so Let's enter a name of what well, numbers submitted. And you can see that we redirecting somewhere, but it does actually work. This was it for this video. If you do like my content and you want to see more, please leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.